This episode, I'm going to focus on the spindle head. This is where we were last time, episode 3, and this was just one block. So this is what it looks like now. I changed the one block into four separate aluminum pieces, half an inch thick, and on the inside it's an epoxy granite. One thing with a machine like this is you have to tram the head. You need to be able to move it left to right, which can be accomplished by these holes on the spindle itself, and you need to be able to move it front to back, or the nod and I'll show you how I'm going to go about doing that. So here's the sub-assembly of, of the Z. These socket head cap screws clamp this to this plate and then these four set screws here allow you to get the tramming just right. Once that's all adjusted exactly the way you want it, you would pour a filling material inside here to lock that position. Uh, Stefan's page, he has a video called Tramming a Milling Machine with Epoxy. It's hard to see in this view where I paused it, but there's epoxy in this gap between the column and the base. So I highly recommend watching that video to see how he did it, and I learned a, a lot of things that he did. He put a cord around the perimeter to keep the epoxy from dripping out, and I have the same thing here. I improved upon it a little bit. Here's the cord going all the way around. It fits into a groove that's machined, and that cord is from McMaster o-ring square stock and it just comes in lengths as long as you want super cheap and let me show you a couple sections so here I have a section going through the screws you can see the socket head cap screw is going to pull it tight and then the set screw is going to set the tram it'll be set so that there's a definitive gap maybe a millimeter or two millimeters and then the other section is from the top going through the screw again but in the top direction I'll turn back on the ring so you can see the epoxy would be trapped in here so I think that'll work really well and I'm, I actually used the word epoxy but what I meant to say was this product Moglis that's what Stefan used and I found a distributor for the United States for that coincidentally they are actually 15 minutes away from my hometown when I go up to Pennsylvania to build this machine, I'll be able to visit them in person and get their recommendations. And they have a handbook here uh, that goes into a lot of details on the products they offer and how to use it. So it looks like this company's been around for a long time. And if for whatever reason I end up not using that product, I was thinking I can put in this gap JB Weld, which has the metal flakes in it, and that's available from Home Depot reading uh, I read through all these comments and learned a lot from the comments some people do similar with that JB weld so that'll be a backup plan okay that's tramming the spindle the other area I changed or I'm um, brainstorming is we were talking about last episode this is a lamination so this is a piece of aluminum then this is a piece of aluminum to get the two inch thickness and then the trucks mount to that everything in between is the epoxy granite and then this is the mount for the nut when you look at this, there's one, two, three, four, five pieces screwed onto this piece, and they're so close together, and is there a better way of doing that? So what I came up with, switch to this version here, is why not just make that one solid piece 50 millimeters, two inches thick? If I get a piece of two inch thick aluminum, and I just hog out all this material, and then fill that with the epoxy granite, it will be stronger, the casting process for the granite will be super easy. I wouldn't have to build a mold because this is fully enclosed because of the perimeter. So the epoxy wouldn't have anywhere to go. It'll be very simple to do that. Probably the downside is it's, it's a lot of material to hog out for my take mill. And the depth here is 25 millimeters. And the minimum distance is 10 millimeters. So on my take, I could fit a 3 8 inch end mill. That's the largest, which is about 9 millimeters. It would get in there, do it. No, oh, and the other disadvantage is it's probably more expensive to buy two inch material instead of one inch. However, it will be one inch, multiple pieces of laminated together. So maybe at the end of the day, the cost is about the same. This would certainly be preferable for strength and for the quality of the machine. The other thing I like about this is the entire perimeter on all four sides is solid material. The walls are 13 millimeters thick or half an inch thick. If I want to mount anything to the side after the machine is completed, it would be no problem to drill and tap holes in here and, and have nice mounting places. These trucks here, they're my representation of the trucks, and it looks like they overhang that, and they do, but let me switch to the real trucks. The one I drew went from this surface 
all the way to this surface. It includes the wipers and the ball recirculation track. This surface is the only one that matters for mounting. So this overhang is, is, is this area here where it doesn't matter. This same technique of using a thicker plate and hogging out all the material, I was looking at the table. It might be conducive to this table also. So I'm making this all one piece and hogging out the material instead of making it one, two, three, four, five, six separate pieces all screwed together. And then the saddle, while this opens, there's an opportunity to do the same thing here. Basically have this from here to here, uh, one two inch thick section, the whole thing, and then hog out everything that's not needed. This would be way too big to put on the TAG to do that. I'd have to do this whole thing on the bridge port. So that's the episode for this week, rethinking this and the tramming system. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next episode.